Hello everybody, so today I am going to be talking about how I made my sister's Vincent Valentine uh, cape and some of his armor bits. So first I draped it over my mannequin to get the layout right, and then once I got the general shape I started trimming off the bottom and making it all jagged, and making holes here and there too, because you know, he's rugged for some reason. And then to make the top part, I laid the mannequin down on the fabric again and cut it in the approximate shape that I wanted. And then, yeah, you gotta have a front and back of that. So then I put it on the mannequin and then I sew it together. And then once it's all sewn together, I'm gonna put it back on the mannequin. It's a lot of back and forth with the mannequin. But yeah, so I layer them right on top of one another. I got a front and a back, and then I'm gonna sew them together so that they become one cape. Now I'm gonna open the front because his thing is kind of open in the front. And then I'm gonna make the neck part. The neck part's like five or six inches. There's uh, a tube that I put this thick interfacing in so that it sticks straight up. And then I sewed that to the cape. And right here, I'm making all the tiny little belts because he's got belts everywhere. Just so many belts. Which I made as like long tubes that I then turn right side out. I use pencils because sometimes they help and then sometimes they're just the illusion of help. This is hard too because these are very small. It's still going. Oh, I'm reliving the pain. But once they're right side out, I then sew them on either side so that they look more beltish. And here they are, all finished. I went and s I'm pinning them onto the areas that they're going to sit. Uh, on the one side, I already sewed in the belt buckles. And now I'm sewing down the neck ones so that they don't move. Because that's where they belong. And yeah, there's me leaving the room. And here's me doing the epic finale of It's Done! Minus any weathering or anything. But it was easy. It took like maybe four hours of actual work. Alright, so now moving on, I am creating the boot armor. Uh, these are going to be removable so that uh, my sister can put them on her boots or she can put them on my boots. It's just about any boots that are there. But I have the toe area like the ankle area and then a thin piece that's gonna go between the two areas because yeah but I went and used the Dremel to sand all the rough edges because my blade was a bit dull so it made a lot of bad edges and then for the toe area rather than actually layering a bunch of layers to create this effect I just sand into the foam itself to create the false you know the lie that it is actually multiple layers because I didn't want to do more <laughs> which is debatable whether or not I saved myself any work because sanding is dirty so here's what it looks like all complete his boots are kind of pointy at the toe which is why it's pointy and you can see all the belts and straps everywhere that are keeping it on I used D rings which you can buy like 50 of them on Amazon Prime for uh, I don't remember, but not that much, right? And so, it kind of just goes into the D-rings like a belt. And it's nice because they're adjustable, which is what I want because it means that these armors can go on most boots, right? But how did we get here? I don't know. Here's the inside with all the nylon straps that I'm using to keep it all together. Let's actually look at how I did it. Okay, so after everything's been uh, sealed with Plasti Dip, primed and painted, I went and took D-rings and put them in like little nylon cordy things and they're the short side and then I created the long sides. When you're hot gluing anything to foam, it's a good idea to kind of cross hatch with a knife uh, in order to help the glue get in deeper. It'll just help hold it better okay we are on to the hands so these are the fingers they're gonna be long and pointy and the rectangles are gonna be the pieces of armor that go between the knuckles 
wait, no, yes, yes, that is it. Sorry, it's been a while, guys. <laughs> So many, and these are just uh, traditional craft foam. Okay, so I glue the triangles to the rectangles, and I'm using contact cement out of a tube, which is weird because I usually use it out of like a bucket. And then he's got like this weird ridge, so I <laughs> I used cord, which is kind of silly, but that's okay because I'm covering it in warbla, and warbla is great because. It doesn't matter that I used cord. That totally doesn't go with it. Like, look, look at that. It just looks like there's a ridge. All right, and this is the palm, which, you know, goes on the back of the... Or, I guess it's not the palm. It's the back of the hand. But it's just a piece of foam covered in warbler, and then to create the indents, I used that marker when it was still really hot. To create her glove, I have this giant glove template I made forever ago that I made by tracing my hand. And then I went and added about half an inch or so around that. This is four-way stretch fabric. This won't work if you use something that doesn't stretch. Uh, but it's nice because it's pleather. And this is what it looks like all together, kind of. It's not done. And she only puts up with so much of me recording her. But yeah, there's her wiggly fingers. All the fingers in the back of the hand I glued on with uh, E6000, which is industrial strength glue. Her arm thing, I'm sorry, I didn't get any footage or anything of it, but it's just foam. And those little brackets on the belts, uh, I created them out of Sculpey and then made resin molds and cast them. Uh, but yeah, now I'm just weathering them to make them more believable which I just put black paint in like the corner crevices and then I use a paper towel to kind of like wipe out most of it and it works thanks guys